Let's go. Are you kidding me? I am so excited to talk about quarterbacks today. And look, I have to say out of all four of these quarterbacks, there is one that we've learned the most about through these first couple of practices. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. It is not the guy you just saw throwing the football. That, of course, is Walker Howard. Good to see him working here with new LSU quarterback coach Joe Sloan. That, of course, right there was Jaden Daniels. And it's very important to keep in mind that there was a change in jersey numbers between Garrett Nussmeyer, uh, who used to wear number five and now wears his high school number, number 13. So obviously when you do these individual quarterback drills, it can get very monotonous, but all Joe Sloan is trying to do here is work with the quarterbacks in their footwork. That, of course, right there is Greg Brooks, the transfer from Arkansas. But we get back here with the quarterbacks, and I want to talk about each one of them individually. Obviously, Miles Brennan is the one that uh, a lot of us are very familiar with, making this decision to come back from the portal. Once again, very simple footwork drills that you see in the background, working on ball security, keeping two hands on the football when in the pocket. Um, but, you know, as far as Miles is concerned, you're looking at um, just a few statistics here. I, I just feel as if we kind of know what type of quarterback Miles is. Now, if you did watch yesterday's film study, you did see Miles actually keep the ball on a zone read, which was a very interesting aspect, which is also something that a lot of people are saying is a differentiator between Jaden Daniels and Miles Brennan is Jaden Daniels mobility. So once again, I, I, I don't think Miles is ever going to be a, a potent runner, but I do think back in 2020, LSU had a few opportunities for him to run the football to at the very least help out a struggling running game in those first couple of weeks. So uh, obviously with Miles, it is good to see him back out there. But the guy that I teased at the beginning of the video, who I think is a quarterback we are learning, learning the most about, actually is Garrett Nussmeyer, and I say that for a few reasons. The first is, obviously, Nuss is a quarterback who has a little bit of mystery surrounding him, obviously, with the redshirt scenario at the end of last year. Now, once again, that could be a totally different discourse for a totally different day. I'm looking towards the future now, but it's the end of last year. But he was able to preserve the redshirt, and now, you know, he is being labeled as the clear number three in this quarterback race behind Miles and Jaden Daniels. For me, this spring is just being the best version of myself that I can be, you know. Uh, obviously, this is a huge quarterback competition, and uh, in these quarterback competitions, you can't run from it. You know, when you're in this type of situation, it brings the best out of everybody. So. If I choose to say, man, this is too deep and I'm out of here, you know, that's not going to make me any better. The only thing I can do is be the best version of myself, let everybody else push me, um, and literally just focus on how can I be the best version of Garrett Nussmeyer today and, you know, just, just keep working your tail off. Um, I mean, I, I won't say anything about either of them. You know, they're great players, Jaden and Miles, you know, and uh, we, we have a really good quarterback room, a lot of good chemistry. You know, I enjoy, uh, enjoy meetings with them and, and, you know, hanging out with them. Um, you know, they're really good, and, you know, they bring the best out of me, and we all bring the best out of each other. So uh, I love the situation that we're in, and it's awesome. Now, of course, Walker Howard is someone that you probably don't expect to play next year, but Nuss is a guy who's trying to shed a bunch of labels. And you're looking at um, uh, his media session, which is transcribed here by Matthew Brune of Go247 Sports, where Garrett Nussmeyer said he's trying to shed a bunch of labels about whether or not why he didn't play in the bowl game or, more importantly, this gunslinger label that has been attached to Garrett Nussmeyer's name since he's come out of high school. And I think gunslinger is attached to his name because he does play a very improvisational style of football in the mold of a Zach Wilson and a Johnny Manziel, even though running-wise, I, I don't think he is on the same level as Johnny Menzel as a runner. But, of course, with Garrett Nussmeyer, he does have a cannon of an arm. And when you just look at him in drills, let's just say you were to take everything you know about these four quarterbacks, your experience, the recruiting rankings, and all of that. If you were just to look at the four quarterbacks raw in drills, you would think Garrett Nussmeyer potentially would be the best out of the group considering how live his arm can actually be. But, you know, it's still one of those things where it's up in the air about whether or not can Garrett Nussmeyer actually win this starter's role. It's a big question mark. I, I do think it is a higher likelihood than what we initially thought. 
I can say just from reading through the tea leaves here, it's not as if Jaden Daniels has set the world totally on fire since he's been there. But then again, this is a guy who just moved to Baton Rouge just a few weeks ago. But still, uh, it, it looks as if Nuss has looked really good in these practices. He's been very involved on changing his body, changing a lot of things about his game. Uh, you saw him at the Elite 11 high school camp in Baton Rouge a few weeks ago. This is a guy who, who's very dedicated to this craft. Boom, I'm looking at you. Yes, you. You knew it was coming. You knew it. We do it every video because I want to make sure you're awake. Because this stat I'm about to share is going to blow your mind. But first, I want to shout out our friends at the Pressy Collection and PressyCollection.com. They're the ones that have been making all this great spring practice breakdowns possible. Thanks again to Anthony Starr Presley. He does a really cool thing. Diamond price match guarantee. Learn more. Presley collection.com and he's also doing a bunch of name image and likeness initiatives with LSU student athletes including our conversation with Jack Best just a week ago now as far as Miles Brennan and Jaden Daniels there is a narrative surrounding Miles Brennan that he is a far more prolific passer than that of Jaden Daniels and to that I'd say it's true now before we finish this Miles Brennan rep I want you to take a look at this, okay? Miles Brennan in 2020 played three games, and in all three of those games, he had over 300 yards passing. And during that same period, Jaden Daniels had 17 starts and had zero games of 300 plus yards passing. And, you know, to further tip the cap of Miles Brennan, he cleared 300 yards easily. He had at least 337 yards passing in all three of his starts. However, there is an asterisk surrounding that, okay? And yes, of course, Miles Brennan is known as, you know, the thrower, and Jaden Daniels giving you more juice with those legs. However, I will say this. Jaden Daniels did not have the weapons that Miles Brennan had. During that time, Miles Brennan had a locked-in Eric Gilbert, who was a very good weapon for LSU right out of the jump. And he also had prime Terrace Marshall, who honestly was the best receiver in college football. I know Devonta Smith ended up winning the Heisman, but in those first couple of games, Terrace was the best. Um, and, and, of course, Jaden Daniels, in his first year at Arizona State, had 12 starts, and five of those starts, he had 300-plus yards passing. And in those starts, he had receivers by the name of Brandon Ayuk, who is currently a good receiver for the San Francisco 49ers, and he also had a receiver by the name of Frank Darby, who is also still in the NFL. So when it comes to 300-yard passing games, we can conclude that, yes, it is mostly byproduct of the guy throwing the football. But there are other factors as well. You do have to have playmakers that do big things with the football. For instance, uh, Terrace had 220 yards in that game versus Missouri, and a lot of that uh, was him just making some pretty good plays. Now, Miles threw some absolute dimes, but you know, in, in order to put up pretty, pretty large passing numbers, you, you have to have dudes on the other side of the football making those plays. And obviously, Jaden, over the past couple of years, I, I could even argue... Jerry Jenkins was a better receiver than anything Jaden Daniels has gotten to work with these past couple of seasons. And uh, I, I don't think Jaden Daniels and Zach Hill had the absolute best relationship, and that was Jaden Daniels' offensive coordinator and quarterback coach over the past couple of seasons. And I don't think anyone is going to uh, think that Herm Edwards is uh, an offensive mastermind either. So, look, I, I, I understand that those passing numbers – do heavily favor that of Miles Brennan, but you do also have to factor in the rushing and you do also have to factor in the circumstances and what surrounded them. That's not so much taking away from Miles in those games, but more so showing a little bit more context to what Jaden had to work with. So obviously to uh, wrap up this video, this is actually uh, Tavion Falk uh, throwing the the fifth quarterback of the walk-ons. Uh, Matt O'Dowd is also a walk-on quarterback. He, he would be QB6. I want you to keep this in mind, okay? At this point, Walker Howard is going to be a really special quarterback. He looks a lot healthier than what we thought he was going to be, knowing um, his injury history. 
but, you know, I, I'm very happy that Walker's out there with that thumb, and he is, to me, and the leg injury from last year, he is, to me, the, the, the QB of the future. To go to Garrett Nussmeyer, we talked a lot about him. I do feel Nuss has made this battle a lot closer than what we thought it was going to be. And I give Nuss a lot of credit. He, there's a lot of people that think he'll never even play it down at LSU again. Um, I, I just really do give that guy just a lot of credit for sticking it out and, and, and putting in the work. Now, as far as Miles and, and Jaden, they're just such different QBs that I do feel uh, the spring game is going to be a very interesting uh, scenario. Now, they did do an 11-on-11 uh, scrimmage period uh, during this practice in particular, and uh, Miles, while he did throw a pick, he did hit Jeray Jenkins on a deep touchdown, while Jaden Daniels did a lot of scrambling and uh, was 5-of-5 five five for 23 yards, but didn't really do anything past first read throws, which is another uh, big question mark surrounding Jaden Daniels. But once again, if you're just now getting to a new campus, I, I don't think... Uh, with the receivers he's just now meeting, I, I don't think there's uh, a whole lot you could expect out of Jaden and really any of these quarterbacks in the first couple of weeks. So we'll see in the spring game if, if there is uh, any differentiation between the QBs um, after a month of getting to work with these quarterbacks and the new coaches and all of that. Uh, it's going to be pretty fascinating to watch. So obviously the poll question for today, do – you feel Garrett Nussmeyer has a legit shot at winning this starting quarterback job. Uh, still very early, still a lot of QB uh, competition left to go. And obviously, uh, there was an even bigger event that happened today, which was, of course, the LSU Pro Day. And if you go to our community page, uh, you will see who my big winners and losers were from uh, the LSU Pro Day today. And I only posted winners because... It's a pro day, but uh, make sure you check that out. And uh, once again, thanks to our friends at the Presty Collection. It is Power Hour LSU Boom! Well, tonight, it's brisket tonight, part two. Let's 